Now let's look at a two-pole amplifier. And so we're not gonna go into as much detail with the analysis as we did with our single pole, but here we see the small signal equivalent circuit for a standard two-stage amplifier. And so we can see some of these resistance values are R, pi values are capital R because we've combined them with any necessary biasing resistors. Um, we also have sort of made some simplifications uh, in terms of other things, but we notice we still have these capacitances C1 and C2, which again are from our sort of parasitic base emitter junction capacitances as well as our Miller capacitance. So again, we're not gonna go through all the details of the analysis, but basically what we can show is that this relationship uh, for our current gain has that of a transfer function with two poles. So what that's going to look like is our current gain, uh, again, which is equal to our output current, which is over there on the right, divided by our input current on the left, is going to be equal to some low frequency gain, A sub I naught, and now we have two poles, so we're gonna have one plus J times the quantity of omega divided by omega one. And our second pole is going to be one plus J times omega divided by omega two. And so again, we can represent this in terms of magnitude and frequency if we want. So we can say our A sub I is equal to, now our magnitude information is going to be uh, just our a sub i naught in the numerator and the magnitude of our denominator again doing that square root of a squared plus b squared for each of those terms we have one plus omega divided by omega one quantity squared times the square root of one plus omega divided by omega two quantity squared and then our phase angle again we have no phase in the numerator so that's going to be zero minus the phase of the denominator or rather just minus the phase of the denominator, negative phase of the denominator rather. Uh, so our first term is going to be, give us inverse tangent of omega divided by omega one. And then because the two terms in the denominator are being multiplied, we add the phase angles. So plus inverse tangent of omega divided by omega two. And so the main difference here between this and our single pole is that now we have two corner frequencies. So our two corner frequencies are omega one and omega two. And so what we're gonna to do to make our, our plotting for our Bode plots a little easier is we're going to assume that our omega two frequency is much greater than our omega one frequency. And so another way to say that is we could just say that our poles are very far apart. And so the reason that's going to make things a little easier is it's going to make it such that we don't have any interaction between these poles. So again, for our Bode plots, we're gonna have sort of two, two pieces of information. We're gonna have our gain or our magnitude information. So our A sub I in DB. And we're also going to have our phase information. So our phi, and so actually let me give myself a little more room on this guy, because uh, we're going to be going to some higher frequencies here. And so this is our phase angle. Both of these are plotted against omega, which is our frequency. And again, that's going to be on a log scale for our mega axis. So first for our gain, we're saying we have a low frequency gain of a sub i naught. So up here in the numerator, if we're putting that into dB, we just multiply it by 20 where we do 20 times the log of that. So if we have 20 log of a i naught, uh, and that's going to stay at that until we reach our first corner frequency. And then we're going to have something else happen at our second corner frequency as well. So let me sort of draw this up here. Maybe something like that. And so we're gonna be constant at this low frequency gain until we hit our first corner frequency at which point we're going to be decreasing by 20 dB per decade. So we have a minus 20 dB per decade slope here. And then once we reach our second corner frequency, we have an additional minus 20 dB per decade, such that our overall slope beyond that point is minus 40 dB per decade. Okay, 
And so again, the two points where these are occurring are our omega-1 and our omega-2. And so this is, for our Bode plot, just a linear approximation, not exact curves. So now because we've assumed that our frequencies omega-1 and omega-2 are far enough apart, we can say here's our omega-1, here is 0.1 times our omega-1, here is 10 times our omega-1, and then over here maybe is our omega-2, which is much larger. Here is maybe one-tenth of our omega-2, and here is 10 times our omega-2. So what we're going to see is that one pole is going to take this down to negative uh, 90, and the second pole is going to take that all the way down to our negative 180. So here we have negative 45 degrees and negative 90 degrees, the same as we saw for our single pole. And then we're also going to drop a little further to our negative 135, and finally negative 180 with our second pole. So let me sort of draw some dashed lines here to make plotting this hopefully a little bit easier. So at our negative 131, we're gonna be at our second corner frequency. And then finally at 10 times that, we're gonna be at our negative 180. Okay, so what this looks like then is again using our linear approximation, we say we know at omega one it's at negative 45. We assume that below a 10th of that it's at zero. And we assume that above 10 times that it's at negative 90. And we say a linear approximation, so we just have, not sure what went on there, uh, so let's get rid of that. Uh, so we say we just have a line connecting through that. So now we have the same type of situation with omega-2, except now we're starting out at negative 90 degrees. So that's sort of our new baseline. So we say we've dropped another 45 degrees at our corner frequency omega-2. Less than a tenth of that, we're at sort of our baseline, in this case negative 90. And above 10 times that, we've dropped 90 degrees from that. And then between there, we say we were using our linear approximation. So we get something that looks like that. And again, in each of those regions where we're decreasing, we have a negative 45 degree per decade slope. So what we note here is that if we have sufficiently high frequencies, we're over in this region, and now we can reach this negative 180 degrees, which means our circuit can become unstable. Whether or not it's unstable depends on the magnitude of our, uh, of our, um, of our gain function that we had up here uh, at the certain frequency that we're considering over in this plot. And so we'll take a closer look at that in a few videos from now, but first we wanna look at a three-pole amplifier.